Yes. I talked to you about uh, the supernova explosion. Here is an example of a supernova about which I had previously shown you the image from the Chandra Observatory. So, if you take an visible band image of Crab Nebula, this is how it appears. It is called Crab Nebula because people thought its structure is, you know, this is the glowing gas, its structure is like that of a crab. Now, if you take X ray image with a telescope like Chandra or earlier Rosette or Einstein, you find if you take time resolved image, you find that. It, in one image, you find a glowing object, a glowing point source, and in the next image, if you take, you find a point source has disappeared. So immediately it tells us that it's a pulsating, it's a pulsating object. And now people have measured precisely pulsation period, and this object is a pulsation period of 33 milliseconds. That means neutron star is revolving about 30 times on its axis per second. Okay? So this is an incredibly fast evolution. Considering the fact that our own sun takes 27 days, the earth takes 24 hours to rotate on its axis. Next slide, please. Now, here are the images, some more super X ray images of um, more supernova remnants. These are all historical supernova remnants. The most famous is supernova of 1572. Which is uh, supernova of 1640 is Cassiopeia. This is the Cassiopeia image, this Cassiopeia supernova event was not recorded, not visible, but when the uh, X ray telescope became available and it became possible to study the X ray sky, one found that it is a shell like structure, it is a supernova, and people have now also found faint optical nebulosity there. The supernova 1572, Tycho uh, was Tycho supernova remnant, was studied in great detail by Tycho, its light curve was obtained, and a lot of details about the decay time and so are available. And so you can see that the X-ray image shows a glowing mass of shell-like structure. Similarly, the radio image also shows a shell-like structure. So essentially, X-rays are produced by what is known as a shock-heated gas. As I told you earlier, the, during the time of explosion, the outer layers of the stars are thrown out at a very high velocity. And as these outer layers travel in the interstellar medium, they compress the interstellar medium, heat the gas, interstellar gas, and this heated interest, compressed interest in gas grows into X rays. And this is the image of Kepler supernova remnant, another historical supernova remnant, which occurred in 1604 and was recorded by Kepler in great detail. So it is again a similar structure. So by studying supernova remnant, we can learn a lot about the, you know, the uh, original star which exploded. We can learn about the magnetic field, about the expansion velocity of the gas and temperature of the gas, uh, abundance of the elements in the gas which is there growing in X-rays and so on. Next slide. 